Okay, children. Like I said, today happens to be Valentine's Day. So start passing out cards and candy and whatnot while I sit here alone and unwanted by any man. Oh, boy! I hope I get a heart sucker! Well, I got you a card, Eric. Marry you? I can't marry you. Yeah, you dumb bitch. You're both too young. No, we're not. We could, too, get married. Maybe in Bizarro World. Richard, what did I say about referencing Superman in this classroom? I'm sorry, Ms. Doyle. It's too late for that now. Now put on this Batman shirt and chain yourself to the wall. Aw, oh, man. Get going, mister. And remember to take your pants down before chaining yourself up. Anyways, Eric, will you marry me? I'm sorry, Mary, but I just can't marry you. Why not? Maybe it's because he doesn't find you attractive. Is this true, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I have to go. Now say the words, Richard. Batman's the greatest superhero of all time. Now I just have to put some peanut butter on your cock and release fire ants onto it, and then your punishment will be complete. Maybe there's some way to attract Eric in some way. Maybe... Hey! Hmm. When in doubt, go Wiccan, I suppose. Wow, what a creepy looking mannequin. May I help you? Dad! Jesus! Don't scare me! I'm sorry, I can't help it. It's the face you see. <sighs> you too, hey? People can't stand to look at you like they do me. You seem very sad, little girl. You'd be too if the boy you had a crush on thought you were unattractive. Hmm, I know of lost love. Damn pigs had to go and bury her. What? Nothing, nothing. How can I help you? I need something... well... I mean, how can I say this? I need something that can help me deal with people in general. Hmm, yes. I think I have just the thing. This pendant has dealt with billions upon billions of people over a course of many years. Some say it's evil. Some say it's for the good of the world. But all who put on the pendant will have a hunger and a new way to look at people. I'll sell it to you for five dollars. Sweet, I'll take it. Wise decision. Such a nice young girl. Jeez, why am I getting deja vu all of a sudden? Hey, you notice your accent keeps going on and off? Way to ruin the illusion, Phil! God! Man, I'm really hungry all of a sudden. Well, hello, Mary! Hello, Father Pastor. Didn't expect to see you in the mall. I didn't expect to see you either. But I do need to talk to you, Mary. Have you eaten yet? No, sir. Well, come on, let's head down to the food court. I'll buy you a greaseball sub. I find you guilty of all charges, Mr. Drumstick. You will be executed by being fed to the Lord Man. What? <laughs> Fuck! What am I going to tell my kidney beans? So I heard you skipped out on Sunday school today, young lady. It was nothing, really. Just a stomach ache. Oh, by the way, that's a lovely pendant you have, Mary. Oh, thanks. I just got it today. You haven't even touched your greaseball soap yet. For some reason, I'm not hungry for that right now. Now, Mary, I'll have none of that stomach ache business again. <gasps> Holy Christ, my fucking poo-smelling finger! I need that to smell poo with! Ah! Hi, Bob. How you doing? Well, that's well. Go fuck yourself. Well, I'm Peter Pan. I love you, Timothy. And I you! I wish I had someone to love. God damn it, who could that be? No! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Ah! She just went stark raving mad. Killed four more people on my way up here. I think the devil has possessed her. Then why the hell come to me, father? Because you're a teacher. I thought she'd confide in you if I brought her here. Yeah, well, I doubt she'll be doing any of that soon. <laughs>
Why not call Father Marin? He's good at this sort of stuff. That old fuck would have a heart attack on me. Why not just tell Mary's parents? Are you crazy? They'd blame me. All the parents would. Do you have any idea what pissed off Christians can do to you? Just look at what happened to that one director down in Hollywood. A bunch of psycho Christians hung him up by his balls on a flagpole. Heh. <laughs> yeah. Psychos. We just have to keep her down there until I can find a way to change her back. But how can we feed her if she'll only eat human flesh? We don't want her to starve. There's only one thing we can do. Ah, uh, holy hell. Hello, I'm a traveling salesman who no one will miss at all. I'd like to sell you this. Uh, ma'am? Uh, what are you... Uh, oh. uh, would you like to try our new fragrance? Uh, uh. What? Oh, uh, uh, no thank you. Oh, oh well. It was worth a shot. <laughs> worth a shot. That's pretty funny. Oh. Dinner time, Mary! Find anything to get this demon out of her? No, not yet. But I am doing my best. Well, you better find something soon. I can't take this killing much longer. It's getting too risky. That was your first kill! Spawn, unit respond. Neighbor says she heard a scream at the Doyle residence. Possible homicide. Possible homicide? Booyah! I'm on it. Yeah! <laughs> Whew. Dinner time's starting to become a bloody business. <laughs> Officer Dan, what brings you here? Sorry to bother you, Miss Doyle. It's just I got a call that there was some screaming going on over here. Are you okay? Hmm? Oh, oh, it's fine. It's not my blood. Hmm. What's the problem, officer? Oh, I get it. You two were playing hide the sausage when the faucet was still on downstairs, eh? What the fuck are you talking about? Don't worry, I'll leave you two alone. Just use a wet nap or something, alright? <laughs> alright. Ow! Jesus, that was close. Tell me about it. And what the hell were you doing coming to the door naked? I hadn't showered in five days. Give me a break. And you're one to talk also, answering the door covered in blood. You know what? Fuck you. Yeah, well, fuck you too. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck me. Fuck me. Oh, fuck me. No, fuck me. Oh, God, fuck me. Listen, baby. Don't even waste your tears on that insensitivity. There's better things for you. I know what you really need. Someone who cares. Someone who's gonna be there for you. Hey, we have the same hair! Someone like me, baby. Someone with sensitivity. Woo! Hey. All right, what the hell? Seriously. I've had better. Yeah, me too. Flash! Oh crap, she got out! Now, Mary, just calm down. Yummy yum yum in my tummy dum dum! Huh? Don't worry, we're almost to the door! Well, we made it. Must eat! Wait a minute, what am I afraid of? She's just a little girl. 
Oh my god, I think she might be dead. Bitch can't take a fucking punch. What did you say? Uh, nothing. Uh, she's not gonna be needing this pendant anymore, is she? Gah, I have a sudden craving for human flesh. The pendant? It's the pendant! Drop it now! So this was the cause of Mary's sudden cannibalistic urges. Let's be rid of it once and for all. <laughs> By throwing it out the window? Meh. Aw, oh, man. What happened? And why are you two naked? Wait a second. Why am I naked? There's a perfectly good explanation for all of this. <gasps> did... did you... did... did you... Ah, oh, crap. I know that look. <gasps> Wait! Hey, a pendant. Is this to make me look a bit smarter? After what that asshole John said last Saturday, anyways. Yeah, and what was that about calling me an idiot? Idiot? Uh, no, I never said anything. Yeah, I know what you called me, you dickweed. Why do I get this strange feeling of... Hey, at least this episode wasn't as bad as a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air episode. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground, was where I spent most of my days chilling out and maxing, relaxing, all cool, and all shooting some b ball outside of school. But a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared and said, You're fooling with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said fresh and it had dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare. But I thought, nah, forget it. Yo, home to Bel Air. I pulled up to the house about seven or eight, and I yelled to the cabbie, Yo, home, smell you later. I looked at my kingdom. I was finally there. Nobody cares.